right, guys, I had this uh, 3D printed branding iron show up. I did all the 3D modeling for it in Google SketchUp, and I had Shapeways 3D printed. Um, it is a uh, steel bronze mix that they have on there. I believe it's labeled steel, but if you look at the details, it calls out bronze or brass or something like that. And, and it is a, I believe it's the binding agent or something like that. Something like that. But um, if you look at all their branding irons, branding irons that are available on their website, they use that material. So I'm pretty confident this is going to work well. Um, so I just did my last name in two lines there. It's about one inch diameter. Uh, the letters are inset about an eighth of an inch. And then there's a, a quarter inch worth of uh, solid material back here. And then I have a quarter inch post on the back. I think it's uh, three quarters of an inch tall. And I'm gonna run a quarter 20 thread down this, uh, die down this to thread it, uh, put a little chamfer on the top. And um, then I can use that to attach my handle to the back end and I'll turn a, an oak handle for the back of it. So, and then um, if you notice the, uh, I don't know if it was SketchUp or Shapeways, but you put these, turn the outside cylinder into um, a sort of a polygon. I don't know if that's just something that the software, uh, that's how it handles it. But if you look real closely, I think it did it on the post as well. So um, if this was more critical, I would, wouldn't be too happy about that. But it's a branding iron, and from here you can tell it's circular. So uh, it, it's not that big of a deal. It's just something I noticed. Um, and then if you look down inside this, uh, sorry for all my dry hands, but if you look down inside this, you can see some sort of like um, rust almost down there. Um, the, the finish, you can start to see some of the layers in there. Um, you can start to see some of the layers. But um, for the entire outside of the part, the finish is pretty good. It's nice and smooth. Um, it's, it's, you know, kind of, looks kind of porous, but, um, you know, we'll be fine for what I'm using it for. So I'm gonna thread the back of it, I'll put a chamfer on there first, and then I'll probably sand the front just to make sure that everything's in the same plane and there's not any parts that stick out. And uh, I'm excited to uh, get using it. So without further ado, I'll get to work on it. So what you see me doing here is trying to put a chamfer on the back end of the post. And this is always a good idea when you're starting a die. It helps the die start, but then also it helps whatever you're threading onto that post start onto the thread as well. If you don't have that, then it makes it real easy for the threads to get uh, cross-threaded. So it's a good idea to do this. It just helps you when you're threading it and then helps you know whoever when they're threading on whatever threads onto this. Um, so I just went around with a file and put a chamfer on it. And then uh, I moved on to trying to thread a die onto this. And to do that, I put the die inside of a socket to try and get some more torque on it and give uh, some more surface area to push against. Um, it didn't really work and uh, I had a lot of trouble with it. I couldn't get the thread to even start. So um, I ended up abandoning this, I, abandoning this idea, but uh, you can see me here struggling with it, so some WD-40, and it just didn't work. So I ended up moving on and trying to thread it in my lathe, and that seemed to work out much better, and I'll, I'll cover that here in a second as well. All right, so I wanted to show the process of threading the back of this. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with it, but this is what ended up working for me. So basically, I put it, I chucked up the uh, branding iron head into my lathe here and I had to put a socket in there to back it up because it kept wanting to push back through the chuck. I couldn't get the chuck tight enough on the steel. Um, it's used to clamping wood after all so um, I ended up putting a, a socket back there just as a stopper and then uh, I threaded on the die onto it. Um, or I guess it wasn't threaded to begin with but uh, turned the die onto it and then I put a socket onto a Jacobs chuck here in my tailstock and I was able to move that the whole way in and use the adjustment on the tailstock to apply all the pressure while I turned the chuck by hand. Um, and it worked out pretty well. So I wasn't using the lathe to actually power it. I was just using the tailstock to apply the pressure while I turned with the headstock. And then once I got past a certain point, I pulled the tailstock off and uh, finished it with a wrench. And, uh, and it worked really well, I have to say. So let me pull this back and I'll show you what the threads look like. So you can see I got the uh, the beginning of it kind of boogered up there. Um, 
just spinning it on. I originally tried to drill, I tried to keep filing it down and I couldn't get it quite right. So that's what it looks like now. They're a little rough, but I'll clean them up with a, uh, a brush and uh, it'll be fine for what I need it for. This is just an up close shot of the final product. And then uh, here I grabbed a piece of oak that I had sitting around in my garage and I cut down a little piece for the handle. Um, it actually turned out pretty well, and this is just me getting some up-close shots. Uh, I got a new GoPro, so I wanted to see how it worked if I clamped it to a toll and uh, made some cuts with it. So we'll see here, just me screwing around, trying to make the handle a little more comfortable to hold. Um, it worked out pretty well. This is a uh, Rockler round insert carbide toll. Um, I use it for most of the contour work that I do, so just uh, me trying to shape the handle around and, and finish it so it's nice and smooth and I didn't have to do a whole lot of sanding and then uh, what you'll see here is uh, I had to drill a hole the entire way through the part in order to get the carriage bolt through and the drill bit wasn't quite deep deep enough so I had to drill it from both sides so this is just me showing you drilling it from the one side but I had to flip it around and do the same from the other side to be able to get it the whole way through and uh, this, uh, this worked out pretty well. I wasn't sure. This is my first time drilling with the tail stock, so it worked out well. All right, so the branding iron head here, and you can see it's kind of uh, rough, so I want to smooth it all out, so I'm just going to sand it down. Um, I don't know, maybe 240 grit or something like that. We'll see. But we've got a Here's how the handle turned out. This is, uh, again, this is a piece of oak and then I used a copper plumbing fitting on the end of it as a, a little ferrule and uh, just used uh, one of my carbide inserts to cut it off to size. Um, you can see on the end of the handle there, there's some knots. I was originally kind of upset that there were gonna be knots left in the handle, but now that I see the final product, I'm really happy that how, how it turned out. And uh, you can see I have here a, uh, I think it's a six inch long quarter 20 carriage bolt with some washers and hex nuts. And uh, that was my kid's hand. Um, but I'm just gonna put it through and you can see when I put it through that the, uh, the carriage bolt sticks out a little bit. So I try to start off by using the nut to draw it on a little bit and that doesn't quite work. So I have to beat it off of the, uh, the lathe bench there. And, and get it in and then uh, after I get it so far I was able to put a wrench on it and finish it out finish drawing the head of the carriage bolt into the the oak there so here's uh, me putting the wrench on it and tightening it down and I tried to get it uh, into the video of you seeing me draw the carriage bolt in but it's yeah shaky at best um, so that's me getting that carriage bolt in and then the rest is pretty easy just thread on um, I have a female female coupling there uh, that threads onto both the carriage bolt and the head and then uh, yeah here's the final product so turned out really well I'm pretty happy with it and then uh, of course I just have a propane torch used for plumbing that I was going to uh, try it out with um, and I have to admit, when I first tried this, it took me a while to get it right. Um, because there's so much metal in the head of this particular branding iron, it took a while to heat up. So I actually cut that part out of the first couple tries of me doing this because you don't want to see me fail a whole bunch of times. Um, but it actually took quite a bit of time to heat up. But after it did heat up, it actually uh, was able to make quite a few marks uh, quite a few um uh, burn marks that i was pretty happy with so seems like it takes a while to get the heat built up into it 
but once it does, it would, you know, you can see here that it's able to burn quite a few marks. Um, and that's probably because there's so much mass of, uh, of stainless steel in the head of it. If it was a little, a little lighter, a little thinner, it'd probably heat up quicker and you maybe get one good burn. But I actually kind of like this, uh, this, the way I did it because you can, you can really know when you're getting a good burn. Um, you can do it on a test piece a couple of times. And then once you get to about this point, you can actually do it on your work piece and know that you're going to get a good product. So overall, I'm really happy with it and uh, it worked out really well. So and uh, here you can just see the final product on a little piece of wood that I had.